MFRS 124 defines the related party as a person or an entity that is related to the entity that is making the financial statements, also referred to as the reporting entity. Definition of related party is a party that can control or jointly control another entity or significantly influence the other entity in making financial or operating decisions. For a person or a close member to be related to an entity, a person must have control or joint control over the entity. Secondly, the person must have significant influence over the entity. And lastly, the person must be a key management personnel of the reporting entity. Moving on, for an entity to be considered related to a reporting entity, the following conditions apply. Firstly, the reporting entity and the entity must be a part of the same group. Secondly, the entity must be a joint venture or an associate of another entity. Thirdly, both entities are a joint venture of a third party. And lastly, one entity is a joint venture of a third party and the second entity is an associate of the third party. If a company provides a benefit plan for the entity itself or to the entity related to the reporting entity, thus the employee of this company will be considered as a reporting entity. The, if an entity is joint control or being controlled by a person identified in paragraph 9 and 8, it also can be considered as a related party. Also, if a person has a significant influence of an entity or is a member of the key management personnel, that is also considered as a related party. And lastly, the entity or any member of group which is, it is provided the key management personnel to the reporting entity or to the parent of the reporting entity is also considered as the related parties. Generally, there are 10 disclosure requirements when related parties' transactions exist in paragraph 21, which are purchases or sales of goods, purchases or sales of properties and other assets, rendering or receiving of services, leases, transfers of research and development, transfers under license agreements, transfers under finance agreements, provision of guarantees or collateral, commitments to do something in the future, and the last one is settlements of liabilities on behalf of the entity or by the entity on behalf of that related party. For related party to sections in respect of employment benefit paid to key management personnel, paragraph 17 outlines that an entity shall disclose the composition when there are short-term employee benefits and post-employment benefits. Paragraph 9 suggests that the relationship between a parent and its subsidiaries shall be disclosed irrespective of whether there have been transactions between them. Basically, at minimum, the disclosure shall include four things, which are the first one is the amount of transactions, the amount of outstanding balances, including commitments, provision for the output debts related to the amount of outstanding balances, and the last one is the expense recognized during the period in respect of bad or doubtful debts due from related To add on, an entity should also disclose compensation paid when there is other long-term benefits, termination benefits, and also when there is a share basement pain. But there is also times when an entity is not needed to disclose their information. For an example, an entity is not needed to disclose their uh, requirement when it is related with a government that has control or joint control of or significant influence over the reporting and the entity is also exempted from disclosing when it is related with another entity that is a related party. This is because the same government has control or joint control of or significant influence over both the reporting entity or the other entity. Even though they are exempted from disclosing, a simplified amount of disclosure is needed. The reporting entity will need to at least disclose the name of the government and its nature of its relationship with the reporting entity. 
Reporting entity will also need to provide in details the details of the nature and the amount of each individually significant transaction and also other transactions that are not co collectively but not individually significant qualitative or quantitative indication of their acts. So that's all now on the short video on related party disclosure. We hope now viewers will know how to identify relationship between parties and how the reporting entity disclose all the requirements needed.